Hello everyone, Speedrunner0218 here, and welcome back to the 386 Speedrun Challenge, where we see how fast each Pokemon can speedrun Pokemon Leaf Green. Sorry I haven't made a 386 video since the Johto Beast race, but I've been busy with my Pokemon Yellow speedrun analysis series. I will be alternating this series and that series every week, so expect more type of content from this channel from here on out. Anyway, in the last single Pokemon speedrun challenge, we did Houndoom and it did pretty good despite it being a fire type in the Kanto region. Today, we are using Flygon. This will be our first stage 3 Pokemon, so the leaderboard will be empty for this video. The ground dragon type combo is a pretty good type combo. It's actually the same combo as Garchomp. It has a base stat total of 520 with great attack and speed which is key in a solo run. It also has great level up moves such as Faint Attack, Sand Attack, and Dragon Breath. Attack. Its TM learn set is also pretty decent. It can also learn Dragon Claw which is more powerful than Dragon Breath, so I may end up picking it up for a better stab move. I can't wait to see what a stage 3 Pokemon is truly capable of. Here are the rules for this challenge, I'll put them in the description if you need to reference them later. If you also happen to like this series and would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Oh, one more thing before I start. I have a brand new Discord server and a Patreon. Please check them out if you're interested in chatting with me and others, or supporting my YouTube journey or both. Links are down below. Now let's get to the run. 3, 2, 1, go. To start things off, I get the PC Potion and pick up my Flygon. This is the first Pokemon I think in this series, don't fact check that, that has 4 moves from the start. The rival's Charmander isn't worth talking about with this moveset though. The best moves we have here are Faint Attack, a 60 base power dark move that never misses, and Sand Attack in case we have to fight something so hard we need to use it. It's not as OP as Double Team, but at least we have it at the start. Sand Tomb isn't that bad either, but I think Faint Attack is going to be our best move. After going through Viridian Forest while avoiding all unnecessary trainers, I enter Pewter City, heal at the center, and go straight to Brock. All I do for him is spam Bite. I could have spammed Faint Attack, but it really doesn't make a difference, they're both a base power of 60. It's just one of them never misses. The Route 3 trainers went as good as you expected. I just spammed Bite and Faint Attack on anything I faced. Mount Moon wasn't that bad either. It was the same as Route 3 in terms of difficulty. You know, for all Pokemon, either Route 3 is easy and Mount Moon is hard, or they're both easy. It's kind of funny to think about. When I get to Cerulean City, after picking up the rare candy and healing at the center, I decide it's as good a time as any to fight Misty. For Staryu, I tried to spam Bite, but Staryu would keep using Recover to heal itself and I couldn't deal enough damage before dying, so I decided it was better to fight Rival 2 instead. He was a lot easier, including the fact that, that with Faint Attack, Sand Attack means nothing to me! Take that you flying son of a fu- Anyway, Route 24 and 25 was not worth mentioning at all. Yep, not at all. I did get Secret Power, so there's that. Once I get the SS ticket from Bill, I defeat the innocent bystander. Oh, come on! Then I get Dig and decide to fight Misty again. I decided to use Bite on Staryu and Faint Attack on Starmie. I did way too much damage with Bite, so Recover wasn't an issue. After defeating Misty, I go down to south to the SSN while grabbing the hidden rare candy and citrus berry along the way, just in case, and I fight Rival 3. This fight is generally pretty easy, no matter what you use, unless it's something dumb like Shedinja or Wobbuffet. Oh, speaking of Wobbuffet, I have a special video coming out for it pretty soon, so keep your eyes out for that by pressing that big ol' subscribe button. With that plug out of the way, I get the HM for cut, heal for free on the SSN, buy super potions and repels, and go fight Lieutenant Surge. With Flygon being a ground type, Electric is not an issue at all here, so I just spam Secret Power for the win. After listening to the guy ramble on about Rapidash, I get the bike voucher, run back to Cerulean, heal at the center, get the bike, and go through Route 9 and Rock Tunnel. 
I did get poisoned by the bug catcher on Route 9, so I had to heal at the Route 10 Pokemon Center, wasting a little bit of time since I ran out of antidotes. I guess in Round 2, I'll need to purchase more antidotes. In Rock Tunnel though, everything is easy to take down with Faint Attack or Bite. This may be boring to some of you, but this section of the video is usually pretty boring. I mean, what do you want me to do? I could mention that Flygon could learn Rock Slide here via Move Tutor, but I couldn't really think of a use for it since Secret Power is better and far accurate. If Flygon was a Rock type though, to get Stab, I probably would have gotten it. Once I get out of Rock Tunnel and get back to Celadon City, I heal at the center and go straight to the Rocket Hideout. I do get the Black Glasses in here to give Dark Moves a 10% boost to give to Flygon. You know, most of these type boosting items are so hard to get in this game. Did you know that one of the only ways to get the Black Belt? an item that increases fighting type moves by 10% is to use Thief on a double battle trainer on Route 15. I would never be able to do that since I can't send out another Pokemon since it's against my rules. Other items like the Spell Tag are only a 5% chance of being held by Wild Haunter which spawn 15% of the time on the top floor of Pokemon Tower. If you watched my Shedinja run, you know this item is really not worth getting at all. Anyway, with that rant out of the way, I fight Giovanni. And then I go do some shopping. Besides the usual Super Potions and Super Repels, I buy 4x Defense, 5x Speeds, 6 Guard Specs, 21x Specials, and 11x Attacks. I'll be sure to mention in Round 2 what X items I actually needed, since in Round 1, I always buy a bit of everything. After getting the HM for Fly and doing some bag sorting, I fly to Lavender Town and fight Rival 4. In my opinion, this is the easiest rival fight since you're more over leveled here than the Rival 3 fight. This fight is just a joke, but he does learn his lesson at Self Co, so I better watch out for that. After sending the Marowak to hell by breathing all over it with stinky onion breath, even causing Marowak to get paralyzed by its awful stench, I rescue Mr. Fuji and fly to Celadon City where I immediately do the Safari Zone crap. I get the Rare Candy and Max Elixir on the way to the Safari Zone, and while in the Safari Zone, I get the Full Restore, Protein, Gold Teeth, and the TM for Double Team. I always allow Double Team in this series, since Leaf Green is way more difficult of a game than Pokemon Red or Blue, and some Pokemon are damn near impossible without it. With that out of the way, the first item I check off my bucket list is fighting Koga. While fighting him, in the first few tries, I kept dying to toxic damage. Plus the high damage of sludge, I decided now's as good a time as any to use a couple of candies. On the winning attempt though, I set up some X specials and spam faint attack. I usually would set up guard specs to prevent smoke screen, but with faint attack, it's not necessary at all. During the second battle with Giovanni, I realized I still had my poison status but there was nothing I could do since I was out of antidotes. Man, I really need to buy more. After a couple of attempts, I just couldn't win the fight with poison constantly ticking down my health, and the super potions were not healing enough, so I decided to dig out, heal at the center, buy some full restores, and try again. There, that is much better. Let's move on. On Sabrina, which I did right after Giovanni, was just a piece of cake since I had dark moves, even though they were special moves, I had the black glasses giving them a bit of an extra boost, so it worked just fine. Now let's get to the Erica fight. I think I forgot to unpause the recording after Sabrina and I have no footage of Erica and now the time is wrong. Oh well, this is why we have round 2, don't worry, this won't happen again. After that amazing Erica fight, I surf down to Cinnabar Mansion, get the goodies within, and fight Blaine. Since Flygon is a ground dragon type, as I've said way too many times already, I resist fire attacks, so this fight wasn't too bad except for a close call or two. After denying Bill's island date yet again, I go fight Giovanni for the final time. In this video at least. I use a couple of X specials and spam Dragon Breath, since that was my most powerful attack. Now, onto the final six fights. Let's do this shit! On Rival 6, I had Earthquake taught over Sand Attack since even if I needed to avoid moves, I could just use Double Team. Anyway, for this fight, I used a couple of X Specials and Spam Dragon Breath. I cannot rely on physical moves since Pidgeot likes to use Feather Dance. 
I swear, this Pokemon makes it hard to solo run this game, but oh well, moving on. I had to buy more X items before fighting the Elite Four, so now I enter the Elite Four chambers. On Lorelei, I finally hit my first roadblock. With the ground dragon type combo, Flygon is four times weak to ice, and Dugon would just Aurora Beam to completely send Flygon back to the Ice Age. What I had to do to get around this roadblock was use Double Team. Even if I trained a ton of extra levels, this fight would still be near impossible without getting to at least level 90. I didn't want to go back in just yet though, since Double Team is still very inconsistent. What I decided to do first was grind for more levels, not for defensive purposes, but just so I can KO the Elite Four's Pokemon quicker. As you know if you watch this series, my favorite place to grind is Route 16 with the bikers, and a close second place being Route 15. The Pokemon on Route 16 give great experience, and with the Versus Seeker being first introduced in this game, it makes grinding extra levels a fuck ton easier. Once I get to level 60, I try Lorelei again. On her, I use Earthquake, which does more than half damage, and for some reason, Dugon doesn't use Aurora Beam, so that was easy to take down. Slowbro will do huge damage with Ice Beam, but luckily I can tank an Ice Beam, so I use this as a chance to set up Double Team in order to take the rest of our team down. On Hiker Bruno, I use a Guard Spec, set up some X attacks, and spam Earthquake on his whole team. <sighs> on Agatha, with the introduction of Levitate in Gen 3, she is no longer easy even with a ground move unlike in Gen 1. For this fight though, I just use some X specials and spam Faint Attack. She is still easy with darker psychic moves, so at least I have those types going for it. On Lance, since Gyarados has no Hydro Pump and its best moves are Dragon Rage and Hyper Beam, I set up my X specials and spam Dragon Claw for the win. You know. Since this was the only spot I had to use Dragon Claw, I don't think it's worth getting Dragon Claw in the first place, so I think in round 2 I'll just stick with Dragon Breath. Finally, to the champion. I use a guard spec to prevent Sand Attacks and Feather Dance, set up some X Specials, and spam Faint Attack for the win. Actually, I don't think that guard spec was necessary since Faint Attack doesn't miss, but I digress, let's move on. Flygon was actually really good except for Lorelei. But with some extra levels and a bit of luck, it can do just fine. It only needed double team on Lorelei, which is not bad at all. Let's see. Flygon beat the game at level 64, with an in-game time of 5 hours and 26 minutes, and a real time of 1 hour, 2 minutes, and 17 seconds. That is not a good game time though, but I'm sure with optimizations and training, I could get it even lowered. So let's see what Flygon does differently in round 2. For round 2 in this series from now on, I'll be discussing everything I did differently, not just major fights like before. Let me know if you like it this way. I do the beginning of the game basically the same, except I fight some more trainers in the early routes, because I do have to be at least level 60 in order to have a chance in hell of beating Lorelei, so that's why I do it. Brock was very easy like last time, as was Rival 2. A no-miss special move like Shockwave or Faint Attack is very OP in this game, since it removes everything that makes Pidgeotto and Pidgeot threatening in the first place. Except for Whirlwind, but that only really applies on Rival 5. I also fought Misty immediately after the SS ticket, and she was easy by spamming Secret Power for Staryu and Faint Attack for Starmie. Lieutenant Surge and Rival 3 are never worth talking about, except to mention they need no mentioning. Now for the shopping. What I finalized on buying was 11x attacks, 28x specials, 6 guard specs, and I was going to buy x speeds, but I didn't. This ended up being a mistake, as you'll see shortly. Rival 4 went down by spamming faint attack, and the Marowak needs no attention for having Mr. Fuji trapped in Pokemon Tower. She will always be punished for what she's done. Never forget it. The next gym leader I fought, instead of Koga, was Rival 5. Yeah, he's not a gym leader, but he'll eventually be one. Anyway, for Rival 5, I took down Pidgeot with Dragon Breath, which was my most powerful special move I had at the moment, 
and I set up some X-Specials on Gyarados and took down the rest of his team. The reason I don't use X-Specials on Pidgeot is due to Whirlwind. The next actual gym leader in the present I fought was Sabrina. Since I always fight her after Rival 5 if I have a good move set to take her down, which I did in Faint Attack. After Sabrina, I fought Koga, Erica, and Blaine in that order. Koga was easy by setting up X specials and spamming Faint Attack to avoid the effects of Smokescreen and Minimize. Erica is basically always easy, unless you can't Oko Victory Bell and it gets off a Stun Spore. But if you can avoid Stun Spore, she isn't that bad. Her team does go down better to physical moves than special moves, so I relied on secret power for this fight. Blaine was probably the most tricky, since even when I get to Arcanine, if I can't kill it in one hit, it'll use Roar forcing a switch due to all my X special buffs. Luckily, I just have to use 6 X specials so I can kill it in one hit. It's a good thing that happened, cause if I didn't Oko it even after that, I would have had to either grind or go back to the Pokemon Center to deposit my HM users. Anyway, let's move on. Giovanni is a breeze after a guard spec and setting up X items since sometimes Giovanni will spam scary face. It's funny how in gen 1 he loved guard specs, yet now on the final gym fight, if you yourself use one, it can completely break his brain and he forget what's to do. This is just extremely fucking hilarious. Now, okay, let's get on to the final six. Rival 6 probably has the least threatening Pidgeot since its only bad move is Feather Dance. It doesn't have Sand Attack here for some reason, so if you don't use physical moves, there's no need to use a guard spec. Before Rival 6, I grinded to level 54 on Route 16, and I used my 6 rare candies I've been saving to go all the way to level 60, saving me a lot of time, and I began fighting Lorelei. In order to win this fight, I have to two hit the Dugon with Earthquake without getting an Aurora Beam, so this takes many tries to get this fight. Then on Slowbro, I have to hope it uses Amnesia so I can set up Double Team. Luckily, Amnesia isn't as broken in Gen 3 as it was in Gen 1, since even after that, I can still tank an Ice Beam, so I can heal up as I set up my six Double Teams. Then I use some X Attacks and spam Earthquake for the win- Yet when Koga uses 3 Minimize, I can never fucking hit him. This is a great reminder that even though Double Team can help you win certain fights, it's still very, very hard and inconsistent. What a nice way to come back to this series. Just pain. Lots of pain. Anyway, on Bruno, I guard spec on Onyx, set up X Attack, and spam Earthquake for the win. Agatha is also easy. I set up X specials and spam faint attack. Her final Gengar is faster than me, so I should have used an X speed, but oh well, everyone only gets two chances for a good time. Lance is also very easy. Gyarados doesn't have Hydro Pump in the remake, so no worries there. Just weak Dragon Rage and Twister. I set up my X specials and X speed and spam Dragon Breath for the win. I didn't bother getting Dragon Claw in this round, since it's still O code the dragons anyway. Finally, the champion, once again. The winning strategy was set up X specials and spam Faint Attack. No need for the guard specs on Pidgeot since Faint Attack ignores Sand Attack, and Feather Dance doesn't really matter to me. Now, what was the final time? Flygon got a final in-game time of 4 hours and 59 minutes, and a real time of 1 hour, 7 minutes, and 50 seconds, and beat the game at level 64. This was a nice improvement for Flygon. I only improved it by less than 30 minutes, but that's still a decent improvement. I think Flygon could have been better if it had a better typing or a better way to deal with Dugon, like maybe a sleep move or something, but it doesn't matter. Flygon gets 11th place on the leaderboard and first place among all stage 3 Pokemon due to being the only one we've done so far. It looks like our next Pokemon is... Slack off. That's all I've got for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next speedrun.